Good morning to all of you. Welcome back to Hospitality Engineering. Today we will continue with the presentation on Plan Preventive Maintenance of Fire Extinguishers Module 6, Part 3. If you haven't watched my previous videos, Part 1 and 2, I suggest you look at these before watching this one. How to perform a plan preventive maintenance of fire extinguishers. Based on time duration, this PPM can be categorized as daily, weekly, monthly, biannually, and annually. Now, let's just recap a few basics before moving on. Fire extinguisher anatomy. Please look at the picture. At the top, you can see a carrying handle which is used to lift a fire extinguisher from one location to another location. This is V-shaped and the bottom lever is called a discharge lever. A hose is fitted in front of the V and a pressure gauge is also fitted on the V-shaped carrying handle and discharge lever. A discharge locking pin and seal are mounted on the front side of the carrying handle. At the bottom of the discharge hose, a discharge nozzle is fixed. The cylinder is called a body. In the midleaf the body, there is a data plate fixed. Please note that all fire extinguishers don't have a pressure gauge. A stored pressure extinguisher fitted with a pressure gauge has the agent and the pressure mixed in the same container inside of the extinguisher. A cartridge operated extinguisher has just powder or agent inside, and there is a separate pressure cartridge that has to be activated to pressurize the extinguisher. This type of dry chemical fire extinguisher has a compressed gas and siphon tube mechanism to cater to the required task. Let's go over the basic firefighting procedure once again. Pull. Aim. Squeeze. And sweep. How to operate the extinguishers. Step 1. Pull the safety pin. This will also break the tamper seal. Step 2. Aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. Step 3. Squeeze the handle to release the extinguishing agent. Step 4. Sweep from side to side starting at the front edge of the fire using a side-to-side -side sweeping motion, work towards the back edge of the fire. Before we move on to simple checks for the daily PPM, you may have a question. Can my in-house team perform a daily PPM? Yes, of course, your in-house team can definitely perform this task. Let us see some important daily tasks for daily PPM activities. Is the fire extinguisher positioned in a manner that makes it easy to pick up in case of any emergency? Is the pressure gauge reading in the green zone? If not, replace it. Does the cylinder weight match the weight as indicated in the installation records? Use a weighing machine to weigh the cylinder accurately. Does the cylinder have any visual signs of damage? Any leakage? Any corrosion? Have service engineers signed on previous maintenance records? Are safety pins and tamper seals in the right place and unbroken? Check these details during a monthly inspection. Confirm the extinguisher is visible, unobstructed, and in its designated location. Verify the locking pin is intact and the tamper seal ice and broken. Examine the extinguisher for obvious physical damage, corrosion, leakage, or clogged nozzle. Confirm the pressure gauge or indicator is in the operable range or position, and lift the extinguisher to ensure it is still full. Make sure the operating instructions on the nameplate are legible and facing outward. Check the last professional service date on the tag. A licensed fire extinguisher maintenance contractor must have inspected the extinguisher within the past 12 months. Check the initial and date the back of the tag. Again to emphasize a few points with an illustration, just listen to it carefully. Figure 0, take a walk around the premises and prepare a fire extinguisher list with type and location. Figure 1, check that the tamper seal unbroken. Figure 2, ensure that the pressure gauge dial is pointed at a green level. Figure 3, check hose and cylinder for any visible damage. In case of any damages, make arrangements for an immediate replacement. Ensure that the fire extinguisher is clearly visible and is stored in an area which is free from clutter. This is another picture. A simple explanation of a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher with a swivel horn as the only difference while firefighting operation ensures the horn upwards and starts back 8 feet then aim at the base of the fire. The remaining procedures are similar to the general firefighting process. 
Comparing fire extinguishers fitted with pressure gauge and non-pressure gauge fire extinguishers. This picture illustrates a cartridge type fire extinguisher which doesn't have a pressure gauge like direct pressure acting on the body of the cylinder while it is in a stationary position. In the first picture, a man weighing a fire extinguisher by simply lifting and comparing with the initial commissioning time weight in case of weight loss should be noted for replacement or refill. If required, a weighing scale can be used to measure the cylinder to find the most accurate readings. The second picture shows a sample of a tamper seal, which should be on the tag position and the fire extinguisher in case off broken tamper seal, is an indication of fire extinguisher misuse and need immediate attention for rectification. In picture 3 a person checking a fire extinguisher visible for damage to the body, hose lever, pressure gauge and nozzle, in case of any damage that needs to be reported for replacement of the fire extinguisher or damaged spares. Picture 4 shows a simple example of a fire extinguisher inspection tag which should contain a minimum of 12 months off service history line engineer's name and the condition of the fire extinguisher. Do you know how to read a fire extinguisher service tag? Let us see here as shown in the tag picture starting from the top rectangle inside the inspecting company name and contact information will be listed on each inspection tag. Next, the inspection technician's extinguisher certification or license number will be listed. Third, the fire extinguisher's chemical type will be hole punched. The fourth validation of inspection will be identified by a hole punch under serviced. Fifth, the month and year in which the inspection was performed will be hole punched and valid for one year from the date indicated. Finally, at the bottom of the tag show date and initial of the service engineer or owner who performed a monthly inspection. Let's summarize the monthly inspection. Verifying the extinguisher is in its designated place, unobstructed, and mounted properly. Examine the extinguisher to ensure there is no evidence of tampering, damage, or any other condition that may prevent it from working properly. Checking the extinguisher's pressure gauge to ensure it shows as being in the green zone and properly charged. Point to note that carbon dioxide type extinguishers don't have a pressure gauge. Confirming that the inspection tag is present and showing the extinguisher next to for services. Check the rear of each extinguisher tag is a section for the date and initials of the inside engineer or owner who performed a monthly inspection. What are the activities carried out during the annual inspection? We will see it one by one. All fire extinguishers should have a thorough inspection by a certified technician or engineer once each year. This examination verifies that the extinguisher is in good condition. I sub to date on any necessary services like internal inspection and hydrostatic tests and is compliant with applicable codes and standards as desired by the region. It is necessary that everyone involved in the PPM team should familiar with the generic nameplate which is shown in this picture. How to find the age of an extinguisher? There are two ways to find out the age of the fire extinguisher either on the tag or the date stamp on the body of the cylinder itself. Sometimes the date stamp is hidden under the plastic ring around the neck of an extinguisher or under the plastic boot of the extinguisher. If the paint has obscured the date stamp, the paint needs to be rubbed off with an emery cloth. For your better understanding, please refer to all three pictures. How do I clean up after a fire extinguisher discharge? If a fire starts, an attempt to tackle the fire using a fire extinguisher is often made, however, even if the fire itself does not cause much damage. The use of firefighting equipment can have consequences of its own. Depending on the extinguisher used, a powder or wet residue can be left behind after the unit has been discharged. Below are a few helpful tips to help with cleaning up any mess that remain. We will see the cleaning measures for powder fire extinguishers. One where the protective equipment is listed in our previous video part 1 and 2. To use a vacuum cleaner to clean up the powder residue, or a brush to sweep it away, if you do not have a vacuum cleaner. 3. Place all the powder from the vacuum cleaner, or any which has been swept up, into a plastic bag and seal it. Dispose of this bag in the usual waste bin. For use a damp cloth to clean any powder residue off furnishings, but do not use large amounts of water. There is a risk that any residue left may start to eat away at soft furnishings. Curtains should also be washed if possible. Cleaning measures for foam, water additive, and wet chemical fire extinguishers. One where the protective equipment is listed in our previous video part 1 and 2. 2. Soak up any excess foam or liquid residue with either paper towels or old towels that can be thrown away. 
3. Wash the area thoroughly with water and use paper towels, or an old towel to soak up any excess. 4. If possible, wash other contaminated fabrics such as curtains, carpets and soft furnishings. 5. Place all towels into a plastic bag and seal before throwing them away into the general waste bin. How to dispose of old fire extinguishers? We should dispose of old fire extinguishers as a responsible way. If you are disposing of one or two foamer powder extinguishers, then the easiest way to do this is to drop them off at your local recycling center or to AM service provider. Water or CO2 extinguishers once discharged by you after the pressure and contents are released become scrap metal. Water extinguishers are the simplest to discharge as they can be let off into unopened drain. CO2 extinguishers can also be discharged outside in an open space with the gas simply dissipating. Foam extinguishers are similar to water extinguishers, they must be discharged more carefully to avoid unwanted contamination. Firefighting foams, duetto their toxic chemicals, must not be discharged to groundwater or rainwater drains and need to be discharged safely into a foul sewer. Warning, CO2 extinguishers can be very dangerous to discharge if they are not fitted with their frost-free horn. Any of the ear discharge a CO2 extinguishers without the pipe and horn being properly fitted, as this can lead to serious injury. The CO2 extinguisher is under very high pressure, and operating the discharge handle without the horn being fitted creates a strong recoil that can break bones. The most commonly used fire extinguisher will be wet chemical, dry power, and halotron which you can see in the picture along with recommended locations. What are the important reminders for the operational team? It is important to ensure that your fire extinguishers are in good working order and are always ready for use in case of an emergency. A maintenance check, also known as a service, should be completed via qualified fire extinguisher engineer on an annual basis, with a further extended refill service after 5 years and replacement or overhaul when the extinguisher reaches 10 years old. As well as giving you peace of mind that your extinguishers remain fully operational, correct extinguisher maintenance is a requirement under BSEN 5306-3-2017. Every year. Maintenance on portable fire extinguishers. Every 5 years. Hydrostatic test on carbon dioxide and water-based extinguishers. Every 6 years. Maintenance on stored pressure extinguishers. Every 12 years. Hydrostatic test on stored pressure and cartridge-operated extinguishers. We have come to the end of this part. Maintenance schedule. We have taken four types of fire extinguishers and tabulated monthly TOT 12 years as required PPM activities. Once PPM is done please ensure to fill the fire extinguisher checklist as shown in this tabulated picture format starting with location, type, condition, due date and remarks if any. I hope now you all are familiar with fire extinguisher plan preventive maintenance activities. Hope you all subscribed to our channel and shared it with all the engineers who want to become chief engineers in this wonderful hospitality industry. Also, please provide thumbs up and your comments if any to my email ID. Thanks for watching, see you soon with another topic on the same subject.